Hi, my name is Benji or Benka or Ben. And this is my first self-produced educational video. Today, we're gonna go hang out with Dr. Mark Weislobel at Portland State University. Let's go. Okay, project side. Uh, lots of stuff happened just now before you call. I'll talk to him, I'll talk to him, bye. Wait, what was that about? <laughs> about this company that we're delivering these systems for. They want everything we made, and I think some of it's proprietary to us, not to them. Oh. Okay, anyway, um, did you see the ping pong paddles? Ping pong paddles? Okay, so, so, uh... Liquid ping pong? <laughs> yeah. Hey, 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 I can do this in 4K. Stand by. Hold on, hold on. Watch, watch, watch. Hi, this is Scott Kelly aboard the International Space Station. I wanted to uh, do a little demonstration of these paddles. They're called hydrophobic paddles, and they, uh, they repel water. Kind of like a raincoat, but uh, but up here on the space station, they allow you to uh, play ping pong with a ball of water, and uh, it's pretty cool. Just plastic sheet, and we run it through a laser cutter. So a laser cutter, you know, just as oh, cool. What what's the resolution? The resolution is the width of the of the laser, so it's like uh, it's like thirty microns. Uh, thirty microns. Yeah. That's that's powerful wow. for plastics, but this is powerful enough for metals. Uh, the result is you burn the material away, and you're left with this forest of posts standing up. Then we go analyze that with the SEM. Could I find one like this? Let's go find them. And what are these? These are the. This is what the surface looks like. You you can't tell. You look at it, and it looks like. You know, it looks like a roughened surface, but that's one. Wow! So that's maybe there's some op, there's some oblong. Wow! Stack. Yeah, yeah. So and what is this made of? This is polycarbonate with a Teflon coat. What even is Teflon? So combining those two things, you get a droplet that hardly touches the surface. It's more touching air than it is the actual surface. And the surface that it does touch, it doesn't wet very well. That's the tip of one of the posts, and that's the valley between posts. Oh wow! Yeah. That is super cool. And so, great resolution of these things. Seriously. Like so these, these little um, little spheres you see, the material is burnt off, and as it does it, it boils, and all kinds of weird things happen. So those spheres are produced, we believe. And, and I'm... You look at it, and it just looks like a rough surface, but it's got this highly arrayed look. And these are made of non weighted things, so the, the droplet sits on there. And so... Wow. It doesn't have this ability to, you know, touch it in a lot of places. Right. No, it's not. That's nothing new. I mean, a lot of people are doing this. This is the non-wetting raincoats. This is non-wetting shoes. You know, this is non-wetting materials for a whole ton of of applications. Windshields. You know, fun stuff, dumb stuff. But how? Why it's unique for us is we're making giant-sized drops. Right. And they're supported by giant-sized features. When people make these things for the ground, like the other folks you were probably talking about, these they're making these nanoscale carbon structures and stuff like this. These are nanometers. You know, our things are like. Our, our thing, like 300 microns, so that's, those are the size of our posts. So this is like, if you made a droplet large enough in low gravity, this big, you could support it with Teflon gloves, you could support it with like this, right? It would be a super hydrophobic surface. It would be very hard to maintain. Right. Get a bunch of people holding a giant sized puddle that's in a giant drop, and that thing would be very difficult to support. It would want to roll off everybody. It would hardly touch anything, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so in those examples, you're seeing a, a blob form, and it just can't penetrate. It can't wet the surface. It touches it, but doesn't wet it, and then boom, it bounces off. So it's a way to contain something without any moving parts. No centrifuge, no weird flow, no weird gas force flow, no weird electric field or anything like that. So you have a really simple process based entirely on the wetting conditions of the surface. Super hydrophilic is good too, because that makes a system like water doesn't wet very well the things, but you'd like it to sometimes. So you can make surfaces super hydrophilic as well. A uh, paper towel, in a way, is a super hydrophilic surface. Sometimes you can put a drop of water on a paper towel, and it'll just beat up. It won't wet. But once it gets into the fibers, they swell. They actually absorb material themselves. And so they don't wet perfectly. But as soon as the water goes into them, then the water is basically seeing itself in the fibers. The water sees itself. When Mark uses the analogy of water seeing itself, 
he's talking about cohesion. In space, intermolecular forces are much more apparent. Cohesion describes why the liquid stays together. In the case of H2O, the cohesive force is hydrogen bonds. On the other hand, adhesion describes the interaction between a liquid and surface. In space, adhesive forces pull the liquid to the surface of the cup, while the cohesive forces compete by pulling the liquid into itself. So it's not wetting the fibers you know, in, in a certain way. In a certain sense, it's not wetting the fibers. It's wetting itself in the fibers, and then it wets out uh, super hydrophilically. Right. So something that... And, and we make structures like that, too. I mean, these surfaces that have the special geometry, that the liquid wets the geometry. And once the, once the liquid is in that geometry, then the bulk liquid sees the liquid that's already there and it wets right across it. Okay, when you say wetting... Wetting is how well the liquid wets the solid. So oil, for instance, wets the garage floor really well, right? It'll spread all over the place. But water won't. It'll beat up on it. Or water on a dirty windshield will beat up on it, whereas an oil spill will spread out all over the place, or an ethanol spill will spread out all over the place. Gotcha. That's a measure of wettability. Okay. You draw this image, right? You draw this image, and this, this is what's on the screen. Print. That goes in here. And these, those are printed in here? Printed right here. So rapid prototyping is just incredibly sped up the process. It might cost you, you know, 150 bucks to print something, but you get it this afternoon, and all told, the price was hundreds of dollars cheaper than what you expected to have before. Right. And I guess the pace, the pace of the process keeps you interested. <laughs> so uh, these guys are doing something well. I mean, everyone works together, but are there a few departments um, that you really rely on? constantly um, to be, you know, continuing you guys' work. <laughs> Computer science is always a good one. Computer right? science. Yeah, but, but everybody needs to program. Uh, film, film, believe it or not, images are really important to us. We get all our data from pictures. So we get volumes, velocities, you know, impact, things and all that. This is, a, this is that drop tower I was telling you about. And it's 100 feet and they get uh, about two seconds of free fall time. So the neat thing about it is it's space. So, so it's the work that we do in here supports our space experiments. Right. Yeah. And so it, it uh, falls freely and then lands into a permanent magnet field that's at the base and that decelerates it so nothing gets shattered. And you're developing uh, the mathematical equations? Yeah. So what we're doing here is we're testing a bunch of phenomena. We test it in a systematic way enough that we can compare certain parameters and see if our mathematics is right. You can control the rate at which things are ejected. So different surface textures and stuff will shoot at different things. You can get a mathematical expression for that. Then you can do other stuff. Do you want to see that again? What we're trying to do is develop these design tools so that we don't have to use these experiments. So we want, we want to know how fluids behave when gravity's gone. There's a lot to do. I mean, plant and animal habitats, you know, water processing of all kinds, yeah. condensing heat exchangers, there's toilets, fuel cells, liquid propellants, you know, there's a lot. With the rapid prototyping, the 3D printing, with the laser cutting, with the fat solid modeling, with all this stuff working together, we can haul in this. And yeah. so it, it, what it does is it also condenses the process to the point where it remains interesting and you remain engaged and then you start the creative process on top of trial and error, just like, just like on the farm. Um, so this is where we build this. up the experiments. Hey, so the rigs, the rigs are these these guys right here. They're pretty simple. So we just put batteries on them, cameras on them, the test cells on them, and we, like I said, we've dropped uh, thousands of these things. We used to be like applied applied mathematics, most just almost all applied mathematics. Okay. And so, so it's fluid mechanics. Greetings. Good morning. Good morning. Howdy. Come to see me? Yeah. Are you going to go up there? Are you? Uh, I'll just follow you. No, no, no. Well, I'm, I have to go up there and talk to Tom after I, this, so I'm I kind of booked. Catch some meeting, but I have like the sponge like I made. I don't know if they told you. Yeah, they did. Okay. And processing file was just a mother load, and it took like almost two days to compile them all into one. 250 megabyte part file. So I uploaded it to my drive, and I'm having them download it because I have no way to send them the file directly. Right. 
And so when he gets back to me with the price, I'll come to you. And okay. Let you know. Okay. But so you, you did the, the so the strategy here is putting all the assemblies together to make it one, right? right. So I got a bunch of small, okay. little, basically different density um, sponge-like structures yeah. in different shapes and orientations, and so I just combined them into one, and then hopefully it'll, it'll work. <laughs> okay. I'll come see you when it's ready. Okay. You got. It. So what's what's cool is when there's a point when the students. There's a point when the student realizes that that their that their something about them um, is connected to their performance, and uh, you know, and their performance is related to their interest, and their interest related to the energy that they can bring to focus on the problem. You know, and all these things go on, and then their and their life kind of gets reordered a little bit to realize that I dig this. You know, I want, and then then they start r real creative. Uh, and their their creative input goes up. I, I don't know if that's oh, the same. Gotcha. You know, I know that's going on all over the world, but it goes on in a special way in, in USC and It's Probably cool to see. Yeah, it's fun to be part of. When the brain starts correlating. <laughs> it's got it. okay, so let me see. I gotta figure out where Okay, so this this is actually this is data and this is a, what's called a regime map, and this is a liquid flow, and this is a gas flow. So liquid, liquids and gases flowing in low gravity, and all the bubbles leave it. We construct force balance singles. That one, this one, this one. Right. And so if you watch this bubble, tries to get entrained. That's great. I'd like to thank Dr. Mark Weislogel for his time and for showing me around. I'd also like to thank all the content producers for making their stuff available. I'm citing my sources down below.